One of the major changes that I've seen uh, in recent years has been brought about by technology and it's been called uh, the death of distance, where distance doesn't matter anymore. Customers and suppliers and even surgeons and their patients could be in different parts of the world. And as a result of that, uh, the world has become much more competitive. There are people all around the world, uh, a mouse click away as the saying goes, uh, that are candidates for jobs that, uh, that you and I have, have held or would want to hold, whereas in the past, we competed with our neighbors uh, for a job. We now compete with people all the way around the world. And the U.S. is at uh, a rather serious disadvantage in the other developed countries. Uh, for example, uh, one can hire 20 uh, assembly workers in Vietnam. I was recently in a plant in Vietnam for the cost of one in America. You can hire uh, eight engineers in India or five chemists in, ch in uh, China, uh, each for the cost of one in America. And so if America is going to compete for jobs, and that's what I mean by competitiveness, uh, can we compete for jobs? Uh, we're going to have to uh, uh, find a way to overcome this disadvantage we have in terms of the, the, uh, the financial rewards that we've come to expect uh, in this country. And there is probably only one way we're going to do that, and that's by being more innovative and uh, quicker to innovate, uh, which to me means uh, investing in basic research. It means uh, investing in quality engineers that can take that basic research performed by scientists and translate it into products and services. It means to have entrepreneurs and their supporters who can take uh, those products and services and put them into the marketplace. And that, I think, is going to be the big competitive challenge. It's, uh, it's a knowledge economy. Uh, knowledge counts. Uh, that's going to be the way we'll get jobs in this new economy.